Let's bring in attorney and political strategist J.C. Polanco now. He is joining us live this afternoon. J.C., I want to know what your reaction was if you, as you took this all in, an historic, extraordinary day in American history. Well, thanks for having me. You know, first thing I think about is that no one is above the law in the United States. We just had the most powerful man at one point, the most powerful man on the, in the world, uh, be brought in an arraignment in Manhattan. This is huge. I hear often people say it's unprecedented. Well, not quite. You know, in many democracies around the world, we have seen former heads of state brought to justice. We've seen it in Argentina, in Italy, in Israel, in France, in Taiwan, and there's many others. But the question here is, do the charges, are the charges that we heard today from the district attorney, do they rise to the level where Americans across the country feel as if justice is actually being served? And that's a that's a very steep mountain for district attorney Bragg to climb. And I think he tried today in, in his forceful message. Uh, but one of the things that we see is that each and every one of these charges seems to be fruit from the poisonous tree. It's still that same tree. It's still hush money payoffs. So now the question is going to be, are each one of these counts, do they justify a district attorney in the most powerful district attorney's office in the country by uh, bringing charges against a former president? And lastly, I think it's important that your viewers know this. The district attorney's office in Manhattan is creme de la creme. Um, th these are the best and the brightest assistant district attorneys in the U.S. And their district attorney here in Manhattan this is someone who has incredible experience, former prosecutor and former deputy attorney general in New York. He wouldn't bring this case unless there was some real substance to it. Sadly, I don't think that the indictment, as we read it, and as you've heard many reporters ask, provides some of the hunger that Americans want to, um, that, that, that Americans have regarding what exactly is the underlying charge and why isn't it in the indictment. His point that no one is above the law, and you just reiterated that. He says they do this all the time. They, this is their bread and butter, to quote Alvin Bragg. They get these kind of cases all the time. So then, if that's the case, why wouldn't you prosecute this particular defendant, as he called him? Great question. Um, you know, prosecutors, and there's thousands of them across the country, local prosecutors, have prosecutorial discretion, where they analyze the budget that the office is going to uh, have to spend on a specific prosecution, and then they weigh it up against the actual crime itself that they're alleging. But many times um, in that same very office, charges are downgraded from felony to misdemeanor. A lot of folks that are on the other side of this um, of, of this debate are saying to themselves, 65% of all gun crimes in New York City are brought down from felonies to misdemeanors. Every day, prosecutors make the decision to, to downgrade charges. What was it about this one here? And that's what a lot of voters across the country are going to want to start uh, hearing from the office. Specifically, what, what was it about this one that rose to the level of so many federal um, felony, so, so many felonies to be charged to a former sitting president. So I think there, I mean, we'd be lying to ourselves. No other, no other defendant would have helicopters chasing him on his way to the to the airport and have 24/7 coverage. So there has to be a good reason. And mm -hmm. I think that the district attorney is very, very uh, uh, experienced. He knows what he's doing. There must be something here. Mm -hmm. There has to be. Well, we uh, or else, or else we wouldn't be in this position. As uh, for the defense attorneys, attorneys and motions, any any predictions what they might uh, uh, do? We know that uh, the judge said December fourth next appearance. We heard Manhattan DA Bragg talk about here in Manhattan. The issue of a change of venue has come up. You know, from now to December, is an eternity. We don't know what the man is going to post on Truth Social. We, I don't know how in the world he he calls the district attorney in Manhattan the first African-American elected an animal and somehow think that that's going to disappear. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. So I think that a lot of the externalities will impact how these motions are written and how they're served. But for sure, you're going to want to see a motion to dismiss the indictment. Um, you're going to see his criminal defense attorneys itemize why they believe that their client was specifically targeted because he was once leader of the free world. So I don't I don't know whether or not you're not going to see any more motions to suppress even more evidence that, that was introduced okay. to the grand jury. Okay. Political strategist J.C. Polanco, thanks so much for the insight. Really appreciate it.